Hey, I am Mustafa Sharif. Thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. Today we're going to talk about what art can make in the urban city. It's going to be super interesting, super cool. I have the pleasure to welcome Ali Davoudi to Urbanistica podcast. Hey, and welcome Ali. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me there. How are you doing? Uh, under circumstances, pretty good, I think. Uh, yeah. I'm good. And surviving? You? Yes, surviving. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am fine. Thank you so much. And also again, thank you so much for giving your time to record this episode. Thank you, sir. So Ali, how would you like uh, to introduce yourself and please tell us what are you passionate about? Well, where do I start? Uh, I started a few years ago. I was interesting to uh, experience different part of design and art and uh, I worked with different companies and uh, I had the pleasure to work with a company called Student and I did a, a Student is a architect bureau here in Gothenburg and uh, we did a job together and they introduced me for a landlord called Vasa Kuna and um, actually by accident I ran up to one of the guys from Vasa Kuna called Daniel and he asked me if there's anything we could do together in town and um, make our cities more beautiful somehow. It was just like a quick meeting, uh, mostly one minute maybe. And I like the idea about to in impact and uh, uh, be part of the town. I was a big fan of the game Sims. And... Um, <laughs> You know, when someone asks you if I if I have an idea to how make the city more interesting or more vibrant, then I cannot turn it down. So after a few weeks later, I called Daniel up on Vasakuna and I told him I have an idea. Uh, they have a lot of buildings in the middle of the towns in Stockholm, Gothenburg, Malmö, and Uppsala. And I said, we could do a project called Art Made This. And he asked me quickly, do you have a name for it? Yes, I said, yes, <laughs> I have a name for it. I have a logo and I have an idea and vision. I think um, I had experienced a small gallery a few years before that. And I, I thought one of the main problems with galleries and more and more with everything in town that you have you have galleries, empty galleries, that galleries uh, sitting there and waiting for customers to come in to pop up. Uh, and uh, I saw it a problem, and I thought it's something like the the way they say, if you cannot bring him to the mountain, bring the mountain to him. So <laughs> I thought if you're having problems to get the audience there, maybe you should bring it to the audience. And I pitched the idea about art ladies, about female artists. And I, and I thought that's one way to give it back in history and art history. Um, and I pitched the idea for Daniel and uh, he liked it. He said, you can give it a try with four different places in Gothenburg and see where it goes. Well, this is five years ago. It started with four walls in Gothenburg and now it's I think over 150 places in Stockholm, Uppsala, Malmö, Gothenburg, Halmstad and Varberg. Uh, so basically what it started a few years ago with four different buildings we saw immediately uh, a great uh, appreciating uh, from the artists, the people in the cities, and from the landlord, because one of the things we missed in the beginning, and we see it coming clearly every year, uh, I don't want to jinx this, but mainly, except the part that you're making city hopefully more beautiful, is the damaging of the buildings going down really 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 uh, much more than we thought 
So there is some kind of code between the artists that once you have an artist who paint there, nobody else go and vandalize that. So basically over a hundred different art projects, I think it's been two times that it's been damaged. And not so much damaged, I would say, it, enough to do you can restore that. So this is where we are now. Yes, that's very great story. And I would love to dig deep and different details. But tell me first, what brought you to art? Why you fall in love with art? Like about your background and your passion? Uh, the thing is, I have different passion, different ideas about life, but somehow I think this is my way to learn about different things. I don't look up so much. I just jump and then dig. And basically what happened with Art Made This was I had a few ideas before that why are we not making more effort to make art more visible in cities? And, um, and my idea about this was not only representing my idea what good art is, is to try to show so many various of different art. So when somebody asks me, this is what I like, is I say it contains what I like, but it certainly try to uh, represent what people like and have different kind of art and and what is art? What's 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 the idea? What, what, when it's art and when it's vandalizing, or when is it legitimate for the artist to present the visionary of idea what art is, or how do you make an interesting city? How do you make it's, it, it, it more beautiful between the houses? How do you work? in the idea of how world should grow without a, uh, I don't know, somehow not only value of the money. Uh, I, we saw it five years ago, and I think that's what Vasa Kronan really liked and most people like is it's not only money you can just appreciate and value and see where it goes. I think this way to do art in different buildings, it shows there's more into it than just money. And um, I think what we call for culture, capital, it's getting more and more important. I think the young people now in the future, and obviously after this, we will see it more, that they don't ask how much they get paid. They will ask what what can this company do for the future? How could I be part of in the future? And hopefully, hopefully, we are part of that thinking in the future, how you cannot count everything in crowns or dollars. Uh, so I think what is what, what, what it makes it really interesting that we started five years ago and saw it clearly we are going in that direction and maybe now we go speed more faster and we will see that change coming what we thought it will take a few years it will take a few months to reset and think again and see what could you do when i don't know when when you have uh, tons of spaces empty spaces uh, and people are not coming in town like they used to so we, we would love to be part of that y yes uh, I don't know the, if I answer the question somehow yes but. yes no it's very interesting reflection and uh, I'm wondering what do you think do you think that architects and urban planners failed in building a beautiful city because so many walls to paint right which means yeah. that the city is ugly. I, I think I think it's not failing, but uh, I think there is so many interest how to make a city. So not the right ideas with right 
direction will come true every time. And people need to see the bigger picture and thinking long terms, not short terms. But we are we are used to it in our in our in our way of seeing how we build future. We are somehow seeing it. How can we do the change now? And what is the impact of what we are doing now? And I think somehow, I don't, I don't know. Somehow, Greta Thunberg couldn't have more on her side like she have now. I think everyone is reflecting right now. What what should we do? What's we have a new start coming? And if we had the chance to live our life once again. What would we do? I think it's great opportunity, and it shows our world that we need to have a bigger picture. And I think that's that's the problem. We didn't have the bigger picture. We we saw somehow how do we solve one problem in one place, and now we need to maybe have a helicopter vision, like go more back and see the whole picture. And I think. Everyone is forced to do that, and I think it's it's one of the best things could happen. It's it's really amazing that everybody has to stop that and think twice. Yes. And that, that's, so I don't know. I, 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 maybe it's somehow failure. Maybe it's short t- way of thinking. Maybe it's too many decision before uh, making cities that. Everything is changing so quickly now as well. Yeah, you you mentioned the impact that you're doing with art on the city. Is it just what are the values that the paintings bring to the city? Is it just like something beautiful, or we are talking more about like safety or and other? We have a project we started two years ago, and we pitched the idea to do parking spots now, and one of the it's really interesting that you mentioned that that one of the one of the main reason we start that project was the unsafety to moving in uh, parking uh, houses and we noticed that somehow that with light with art uh, with more people around you get more safety i think Somehow we forget about the light in this town and the beautiful way of doing the town, who makes people moving around more, is what it's making it more safe. We 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 pitched the idea about to do the parking spot here, five floors to Guggenheim. So the whole idea and concept is to do hundred different artists during ten years, and somehow bring i don't know maybe more light more art more color more happiness more smile and and somehow have a reason to go back and see what happened i think there is so many ways to see what art made this does or those kind of projects uh, and it's not only the value of the cultural capital we talked about or making it more beautiful or making it more safe it's like i said it's really interesting that we notice the damaging of these houses went really really down so what they had problem with damaging different uh, part of the buildings is so reducing that it's very interesting somehow the art is making it less damaged and I see. I think, as the way I see it, art have suddenly came in our living room as well. I think people have traveled a lot and seen so much, and thinking now as well, like, what, what, why don't we have that here? And I think, I think it's important that to have it in your mind that. It's not only about art. It's about vision, about how we could uh, have a nicer city to be in. 
and what kind of message we send with art yeah. and different kind of message as well yeah uh, and different kind of art mm -hmm. so now two questions actually about the message that you're sending firstly you choose to have just a female artist female art. yes so i why you just focus on females and then the second one do you have any criteria about what the artist should draw or they are free to draw whatever they want uh, first of all uh, the reason i came up idea of only with female artists i saw uh, through history not in art in every aspect of life uh, there's been some kind of apartheid against female and it doesn't mean necessarily that it hasn't been any art or artists from female artists uh, but somehow I, I, I don't want to go into why this happened but I see as a male my responsibility is somehow to show uh, show uh, what we could change and what we could start and you know we are here for brief moments and this is somehow my way of giving back what it's been given to me in so many years and somehow I, I, I feel it I feel really unfair both the female artists and the art who haven't come to the living room until late two three four or five years in Sweden. I won't will, I will say it's like that everywhere, but the female part is like that. And I think it's everybody have as a responsibility to make, a, I don't know, more justice place. I, I, I really don't want to talk about that part somehow. I, it sounds like I'm better than anyone else, but I'm not. <laughs> and, I understand, I understand. Yeah. But the second question is... Uh, it, it was about if you have any criteria... No, actually no. Uh, you, what, what, we, what we ask for is a portfolio, what you've done before and uh, what you would like to do. And uh, we have a question, did you ever do anything like this, like moral or uh, bigger picture? And I, I would think most of those we had in our uh, paintings or art is 50-50 and it's, uh, most of them are uh, new into this. And I think that's what it's making it interesting because I've been questioned and I, I think it's really fair that is this really art? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if it is art. I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm trying to show a part. I don't say necessarily. I'm showing all the parts, but what we get in, and what we representing, we try to represent so many different ideas, and I don't know. Maybe future will tell if we succeed and did a good job. Uh, I think it's too early to say, but somehow I what we try to do is show both from unestablished and established. That's more important. And, um, you know, like everything else, there is um, there, there is different inspirational that impact the all different artists. So you see it very clearly, even if you have various of different type of artists, you will see always the same with mostly 85, 90% have this common idea from, uh, from the background, what they inspired of. So we, we try to make it as free as much as we can. And I think until now, we didn't have any uh, censorship when it comes to art and we will hopefully not 
we have some kind of idea that maybe uh, I, I don't remember what we said in the, what we put, but maybe not too political. Even if I don't like some parties, it doesn't mean that the artist could paint special person with a target and, you know, not too much. Uh, but somehow we had a lot of different political ideas. It came true and we are not stranger to do, making it coming true as well. But it doesn't need to on this, it doesn't need to necessarily point out personally Person, someone. Yes, yes yeah. not personally. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what kind of value we have. Uh, it's yeah. We hopefully we don't have that problem in the future. <laughs> we didn't have any problem until now. And there is there's so much subtle subtle uh way of showing different things so somehow a lot of things are really political but just when you know what the artist thinks not with your own eyes maybe always yeah uh, so yeah it's, and yeah and, and in between these artists let's let's talk about the background are all of them swedish or do you have from different countries if we see we the diversity. Had some different kinds, yeah, diversity. We had that, and it's really interesting. Uh, we had one person from New York two years ago, one from London last year, uh, one from Italy. Yeah, different. I would say different, but of course, we cannot bring someone who got to pay a lot for a ticket to just come here for two, three days and get the money we offer. So unfortunately we don't get everyone from everywhere, but I think it's very interesting now as well when you cannot travel. So there are so many people asked us, and as we said, we, we, are, we are going by the book, by Swedish government and what they recommend. And we are at most two person in Round between thousand to two thousand square meters artists are working, so it's okay, right? Yes, now. yes. Well, tell me, do you? I am back again to the criteria. See, do you prefer to have a local artist than having an artist coming from, let's say, out of Sweden? Do you have? Do you? Do you reflect about this? How to empower the local artist? No, of course. Of course, we do it in different way, but mostly we are doing it to have a different kind of artist painting. Um, I, I think somehow, of course, you have more artists from the different places we've been to. But I mean, if you have 10, 20 different roles, you want to give the audience different type of art and somehow you have it sometimes in your town sometimes you don't and the first thing we are looking for is actually what you done and what you want to do uh, but of course it's impacting because if, when we do commercial we do it locally like this year we did it only in sweden so of course it will be more swedish but last year we did it sweden as well but we get like I would say like 10% from different countries. Okay, okay. Do, do, you, do you see there are different ages? Like you have young talent, people, yes, old artists? Yes. How is the... We have, we have everything from, I think the youngest who've been painting for us, it's been 17 and the oldest maybe 60. Wow. I think, yeah. So... I think it was 60. I, I don't want to ask too much about <laughs> ages, but uh, you never know. But um, no, but, but again, we don't look at that as a criteria. We don't look actually if you have a background in art as well. I, I'm, I'm not sure that's what make good artists if they have been in fancy schools or uh, been. Uh, used to painting 
Yeah, but so, we, we try to do, show different types. Of yeah, so, so for you, the, 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 the story that is matter, the content. Exactly. And the place. And somehow, uh, somebody asked me, what, how do you look in, when you're picking up? Uh, it's, it's not about someone being good or bad. It's more in the content together what you want to show as well. I think it's very important because we never claim or never claim that we know what we do. We, we just say we want to show a part of it and what we would like to share with different audience. And this year we did this, next year you never know, maybe it's totally different. But my idea is to show not only paintings. So in the future, you will have different way of expression. Yeah. And what kind of ways you're thinking about? Is going to be something digital, lights, exhibitions? Exactly. Or... We had some uh, female artist called Yusufine Eklund. Uh, she was with us last year. And She's she a light knew... designer. Right? Yes, exactly. Yes. And I loved it when it came yeah. because we need we need to show different way and what is again what is art and i like that i get question because that's what art should do it should make you feel something and if you make someone feel something that they need to ask that question then we are one step further what we are thinking of so some ask why did you have that and somewhat like it's really good but again what is art it's yeah. so different and this is not mainly for art lovers it's for all the rest it's like this parking spot it's like for average people what what do they think what do they like and we had through these years the the biggest complaint we had it was like, why do you do the science in English? I said, because Swedes are really good in English and they have a lot of tourists. And yeah, maybe we should do it in two different ways. But we choose English because we think it's an international thing. And yeah, so that was that was one female who like was really upset. But I mean, it's yeah. everyone have right to their, have their own opinion and it's good to be questioned and you you make to think twice or three times to see is there a point to change that yes this is what i love actually about art especially public art it's about raising a discussion like me exactly. and my friend walking looking at a painting and we start just a discussion with uh, nowhere and talking and this brought us to somewhere else and thinking a big scale and so on so I really appreciate the, 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 the great painting with a great concept. Ali, tell me what are the, the areas or the walls you're painting? You mentioned the parking lots. What, where, where are the other spots? It's what we got from different landlords and mainly from uh, Vasakulam. It's everything from small doors to big doors or a part of buildings and I'm starting to do different art projects, not necessarily under Art Made This. And we thought maybe we take it to the next level. And then we did the art project on the floor. So it will be so many different various of type of art. And I've seen already somebody is doing carpet this year. So it's, it's what we need to do is different like i said different type of art should come and and hopefully in different part of what you've never seen before and um, that the good part is with this project i would say it's not my part only it's what you see what this art done for the artists most of the artists get contact by different landlords after this and maybe get two three different uh projects different projects that they get paid that's 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 the second 
interesting stuff. It's sometimes I had like artists who haven't sent their bill to me and I contact them and it happened two, three times. And I said, I, I miss your invoice. And they say, invoice? I say, yeah, you gotta get paid. What? I don't get paid. So these people are used to get free jobs everywhere. And it's really strange. And that's another thing I wanted to make change. It's like everything else, you need to get paid. And yes. it's very important for me. So it's not like a project, okay, you should be happy and satisfied because you having the permission to do a wall or a floor or a ceiling. So that's, that's a really interesting thing. You have the artist read the contract that you're getting paid, but somehow they are so used to get doing things for free. So they get shocked, like said, you're going to get paid. What? I thought I did it for free. I'm so happy. Now. That's, that's so, very sad, actually. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's, it's really sad, yes. Yeah. But, but ma- many, let's say, Vasek Rona now made this change, which is really great. But I'm working with urban planning and design, and many landowners or landlords, they're not really willing into art because they don't see the value of what art can generate. For them, it's not just about wasting money. So what mindset do they need to understand what art can bring? COVID-19. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think a lot of people have to change their minds now. I think future is now. You have to make that change now. And if it is not by art, you have to do something else. And I don't know, art is coming closer and closer. And I think if you miss that, the cultural capital, it would be hard in the future to compete, to become in competition with the others because there is just amount of money you can do. There is just amount of, uh, what do you say? There's, there's just, just amount of people you can get paid from or you can pay or you can get the market. After that, it's not about money anymore. It's about what kind of values you want to send out. And it's not about PR only. It's about h and and it's what it does for the people who do work in the companies. I mean, I, I would like to hopefully think that this is not only about branding. It's all, all about in the future and now already it's about how do you attract new clients or new uh, colleagues or how do you keep your colleagues and it's it's not only voice of outside it's voice of inside as well and yeah. i think it's getting getting more closer to that reality that we need to not check out how much money you make of everything and I think if you're already there. So, so money is not the, the prior, the number one. No, I don't think it, it's, it, it's that in the future. I don't think so. I think we have already seen the changes and we will see it more in the world that everybody's competing about the same customers or same clients. It's about what kind of values you have. And I think the customer is so much uh, informed right now, so you, you cannot fool them. Yes, it's, it's not about fancy address anymore. It's about what do you send, what kind of information about your company. Sorry for my English. I wish I could have done this in Swedish, but no, but, I think it's it's very clear. And also now it tries a, a new question. So b- you're you're painting now the walls and so on because the architects design somehow or fail and design a, a livable walls. But now architects like designing a beautiful buildings, which means m- you might have less walls to paint in the future. What is your reflection about this? Do you believe that in the future you will still have to deal with so many boring walls or facades? Then again, like art, 
what is beautiful, what's not. Let's say a gray concrete wall. What do you no, think? I know, I know, but, but <laughs> ah, yes, yes. <laughs> it's I don't know. Maybe maybe the wall was much nicer before. I don't know. I'm not the one who can judge that. And I think as long as it's different way of seeing thing, I think it will raise. Is it nice? Is it art? Do we need it, or do we need to change it? I mean, I. I don't think it will end here. And it, I, I won't say that they failed. I think maybe in 20 years from now, somebody thinks, what a crazy idea this kid had. I had to run it out through a whole country. Maybe somebody's thinking right now. I don't know. Um, so it's interesting. Yeah, so you mean it's a, a moving concept is not something <laughs> no but I mean that's the beauty of everything right now and always been what is art what is beautiful what's failure mm. uh, um, I don't know like Mandela said he said sometimes I win sometimes I learn maybe it's not failing it's learning and that that's the way I see it that's, I think that's very beautiful way of looking at the, the, let's say, not the issue, but the challenge instead. Yes. Having this very great a positive mindset. So uh, you inspired me now. So thank you so much. Thank really. you, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. I'm wondering also about what should the municipality do to empower the public art? Do you think that you're alone in this field or municipality is helping somehow? I think somehow you need different um, kind of initials. And I don't know. I think we live in a great country who does so many ways so much better in so many countries without pointing any other countries. But I think the freedom to do what you want and show it, it's bigger than everything else. I mean, it shows once again by COVID-19, how we handle the whole situation. And I believe somehow, I think somehow, I think it needs help and it doesn't. It needs to be private somehow maybe crazy fools like me who think they know art and maybe it should be government paid role maybe both or maybe the third i don't know uh, i know the freedom to do this is more than important who is doing it so you believe that everyone that feels or have the willing to to do the arts should do it and shouldn't yes, be a fixed, a fixed rule no, I, 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 it's it's so so deep question. It's it's not just answering by yes or no. But I think I don't know. Somehow we are. I I, I know when we did an art project in a small village here, and I had a fixed idea that everybody will come out and say, "Oh, what are you doing?" Blah 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 blah. You have so many way of thinking that you think that you know something and you see when you do it and you have totally wrong and somehow by having the freedom to do that is what's make you change your mindset and see wow i was wrong i had an idea that these people don't like this but all suddenly i was so embarrassed some neighbor came out with a cake and coffee. I thought, um, I thought all the time, this is going to start a really big arguing. But no, it didn't. And what I liked with that and what it shows, it's just the freedom to do it. It's more than important who is doing it. 
Yeah. It's um, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, so much hippie inside of me who's talking. No, I think I think this is. I'm very happy that you share your reflection because this is what we need, especially for us working with city development. This is what we need. We need inspiration to understand yeah. what's going on. What's the other part part of the story? So again, I'm very grateful that you're sharing with us. Thank you, Ali. If I ask you what is a smart city for you, how will you define it? Changing city. It had to be. It had to change in the right time, in the right way. It's it's. I mean, I mean the whole world is changing from minute to minute, and it shows. It's it, we have to be quick in our decision, and and somehow question everything, but somehow be prepared to fail because I think by failure comes innovation. And I think it's important to let us do quick ideas, do quick decision and be prepared to fail and not seeing it as a failing. It's more seeing it to learning or yeah. It's, it's it's really complicated question, but somehow I think our time shows that you need to be quick in every decision. It's I mean most of the countries now who are getting criticized is criticizing because they were not quick enough and flexible enough and didn't question enough, and they thought what is working for one country, it may necessarily work for you. But it's the same thing with the cities. You have to fix your own ideas, believe in your strategy, believe in your way of doing it. And I think there's different DNA in different cities. And I think the worst thing you can do is copy pasting. So there is no obvious answer. This is, this is not a quick fix. But I think, I think, I think you, you, you should do more flexible cities. Yeah. I think I th maybe invite the young people. Where is the future? Yes, I. So if I might put everything in a, in a picture, so a smart city that is a city that brave to try new thing, exactly. and g g give give the chance to the young people to be part of this change. If they fail, they learn and redo it. Exactly. Failure is a good thing. In our society, it becomes really bad, but it's not. I've failed so many times, and I will keep on failing, because that's how I grow. Wow. I don't grow by not failing. And I think I'm already gained in my game that I'm too old for this game, actually. If I ordered myself, I would kick myself and bring on some 18 or 20 years old kid. They... I mean, I have a daughter seven years old. She makes me think everything, everything I say. I mean, that's seven years old kid. Yes. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's very interesting. And I'm super happy to have this episode with you because usually the other episode is more about like, it's less reflection and more like in this episode, I got so much inspiration and we didn't really follow a, a fixed structure of the conversation. So I'm, I'm happy to get out of my conversation comfort zone. Yeah, good. <laughs> Glad to do that. <laughs> yes. Uh, Ali, I'm, again, I'm so thankful for this episode Thank and you, also sir. for your Thank time. You, and now I would love to hear what is the next step for you. Um, I have different projects in autumn and winter, uh, but I think we need to rethink whole art maybe for next year. And it's it's not necessary what we've done is wrong. Maybe we should think it's wrong and do it again. Because everybody is building now. The good part of this moment is 
when everything is going down, there is tomorrow that we can build up everything. And when you are a little company like I am, you can afford that and rethink and see where is, where is the future at? What could we do to make a change? So hopefully it's a lesson for us all. Yes. And if, hopefully for me too, I'm thinking what's, what's art made this 2.0? Is it really parking spots? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I work with this next year. I'm happy that I had this opportunity, but I'm crazy and I need to do different things. Maybe it's someone else. Maybe I should bring that 16 years old kid and say, do it as the way you want to. I'm, I'm maybe good somehow to start everything, but I, maybe I'm not the smart or best person for the job after a few years. I'm not. I think it's going to be a super interesting journey to, to figure out what's art made 2.0. And I would love that we keep in touch and also to talk Definitely more about it in so. the future. Definitely. So. How would you like to, now we talked about so interesting topics and angles dealing with art. So how would you like to summarize your reflection in three takeaway messages to all the people that is listening to you? I, it's, I don't say this is necessarily what is good for everyone else, but what it worked for me is so many different things. Somehow I'm, I'm not comfortable for change. Trust me. I hate change. I've been through change all my life in so many ways, but somehow I think it brings the best of me to question everything I do. And I think as a person, you need to do that often and see, is this the right way to go? It's, it's not what you're doing before, it's what you're doing after. So I will prefer jump and then think, was it right or was it wrong? So I would not recommend anyone to have that question before. It's a question when you've done the jump. Did I do it right? Should I done that? Or, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's crazy that you should know anything before you start. It's the journey and what you learn through your way. And have a clear mind where you're heading and be prepared that it could change. Because again, so many people think and see me as a person who likes change. I don't like change, but I need to be the change. It's really strange, but with my background, I've been through so many difficult times and being forced to do things I didn't like or didn't feel comfortable. So I have it in my backbone. Somehow I need to change all the time, but it doesn't mean I'm comfortable with it. But that's life. It would be very boring if I was comfortable with everything I've done. And there is not a day I, it goes by, I question everything I do. But I mean, that's, that's, I think it's good to be reflecting, but after what you've done, not before. Yeah. And that's make you make sound strange, but it's different between what I work with. Maybe it doesn't work in every <laughs> aspects in every job. But for me, it's more like that. I, seriously, I don't know if, if I'm wise enough to give any advice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I mean, then who, who could have guessed that 
whole world will be shut down. Did you thought of that in December 2019? Of course that not. This is you no. Know, this is this is crazy times. And if you reflect and you go way back, we have so many different of these kind of moments that change our lives for future. So it's not the first, it's not the last. So embrace the change, be part of it. That's what I shoot. That's a, that's a great message, to be honest. How how would you like to describe this episode with three hashtags? Make failure great again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't now, know. Now you should have the mic drop. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, so th that's that come from bottom of my heart. Make failure great again. I think it's important for that's... a creative person to be to be part of that failure. Yes, and that's very beautiful. Everything from art is very beautiful. And again, thank Ali, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Lisa. And for all your reflection, especially the philosophical part of them. I, I, I really, really like them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And hopefully see you soon when the corona is gone. Definitely. You come by Gothenburg, you let me know. And if I come by Stockholm, I let you know. You're more than welcome. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. I really like this episode. And I definitely will listen to it so many times. So please don't forget to follow Instagram account and LinkedIn and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have any great story that makes our city smarter, please contact me. I am Mustafa Sharif. Have a good life.